Today, I'm going to recap a 2010 Korean drama movie called Le Grand Chef. This movie is about a world-renowned chef who returns to her hometown, South Korea, to compete in a nationwide kimchi contest. Many talented kimchi chefs around the nation participate in this contest, including her stepbrother. She bet with her brother, whoever wins the competition, will have the right to decide the future of their family-run restaurant. What's the matter with their family-run restaurant? And who will win the competition? Let's find out together. The movie starts with a group of chefs, preparing dishes for a large banquet. The executive chef in charge for that banquet is Jang, a famous Korean chef who is now working for the Prime Minister of Japan. Turns out that the Prime Minister of Japan is hosting the President of South Korea and his state officials. The banquet initially went smoothly before two special dishes, which are recognized by the President of South Korea as kimchi and bulgogi, came to their table. The President of South Korea happily says that the kimchi and bulgogi are both very delicious. Hearing this, the Prime Minister of Japan offendedly corrects that statement. He said that the dishes are yakiniku and kimuchi, which are representative of Japanese food, not Korean. The President of South Korea is shocked by that statement and the situation is suddenly heating up. As a result, as soon as the President of South Korea returns to his country, he immediately instructs to hold a nationwide kimchi contest to reaffirm that kimchi originates from South Korea. News of the kimchi contest quickly spread across the country and everyone knows about it, including Jang and her stepbrother, Chan, who is working as a vegetable seller in another city. Knowing that there will be a kimchi contest, Jang decides to resign from her job and return to her home country. One day, Chan decides to visit his stepmother after six months of not showing up. He also brings his girlfriend, Jin. Coincidentally, that day, Jang also visits her mother after 10 years abroad. Their mother runs a traditional restaurant called Chunyang Gak. But because of debt and she hasn't felt well recently, the restaurant has been temporarily closed for two weeks. Knowing this, Jang tells her mom that she actually wants to close down the restaurant and change it into a modern restaurant. Of course her mother and Chan don't let her do so because of the restaurant's historical value. Furthermore, her mother is aware that Jang actually doesn't want to change the restaurant, but to get rid of it instead. So, what makes Jang hate this place so much? Turns out that she has a bad memory with this restaurant. It reminds her of her childhood when her friends bullied her because she didn't have a father. That's why she wants to tear the restaurant down. On the other hand, Jang shows up in an interview show where she is asked about her decision on joining the kimchi contest. Now, everyone knows that an elite chef is joining the contest, including Chan Jin convinces Chan to join the contest by telling him that he can pay his mother's debt if he wins. Not only that, he also can show Chun Yang Gak's kimchi to the world. Meanwhile, Chan sees this opportunity through a different perspective. He bets with Jang, whoever wins the competition, will have the right to decide the future of Chun Yang Gak. Jang doesn't expect her brother to bet like that, but she accepts it. Finally, the kimchi contest day comes. The venue is crowded by so many people. There are a lot of kimchi stands too. This contest consists of three rounds, and the topics of each round are different from each other. For the first round, the topic is our proud kimchi. Here, the contest committees want the contestants to make a non-spicy kimchi, which represents the original Korean kimchi. They are given one week to prepare for it. Before leaving the venue, Jang boasts to her brother that he has no chance to beat her. Jang makes good use of her time to prepare the best ingredients for her kimchi. She even makes her own sea salt herself because the salt available in stores has gone into mass production. It took her a long time to finally get the salt she wanted. Meanwhile, Chan is working hard in the kitchen, trying every combination of ingredients to make the best kimchi. However, he just realizes that the other chefs won't use salt available in the store, they must have gotten better salt. But he is too late now. So what ingredient will he use in the upcoming contest? The first round starts. Every contestant is ready with their own ingredients and cooking tools. Two hours of cooking time should be enough for them, especially Jang. Her experiences help her to stay calm during the competition. 
On the other hand, Chan also doesn't seem to have any difficulty. And finally, the cooking time is up. Now it's time for the judges to judge the food. They look happy with the contestant's kimchi. However, they look more satisfied after trying Jiang's kimchi. Her kimchi, which looks like an appetizer, is considered a unique dish, as kimchi is usually a main dish. The unique and innovative ingredients that Jiang used in her kimchi makes the judges even more delighted. But how about Chan? Apparently, the judges liked his kimchi too. While the other contestant used salt, he used traditional soy sauce instead. It suits his kimchi perfectly. As soon as the judging is over, the scores are displayed on a giant board. Surprisingly, Jiang only got second place while Chan was in first place. Jiang is very upset with this result, moreover she had already boasted to her brother. But it's not over yet, they still have two more rounds to compete. The second round will start next week and the topic will be Morning Serenity with Kimchi. Now, every contestant has to prepare for another menu. Chan decides to visit a coastal area to look for any ideas, accompanied by Jin. A lot of king crabs can be found there. While they are going to buy some, they meet a man who usually works for his friend in the persimmon fruit industry in Seoul, his name is Sang. Turns out that he comes from that area. Sang introduces them to a famous kimchi restaurant over there. Apparently, that's Sang's mother's restaurant. When they start eating, she tells them that her son was a talented runner who won a lot of national competitions. However, he is on the run now, and the police are looking for him. But still, she believes that her son is innocent. On their way back to Seoul, Sang stops their car. He asks them to accompany him to drink. Here, he admits that a few years ago he accidentally killed someone. He was drunk and got into a fight with someone. Long story short, he pushed the person into the street and a car hit him. Now the cops are looking for Sang, so he doesn't have the guts to come home. He really regrets what he did and misses his mother so much, especially her food. Jin convinces him to visit his mother and he agrees. That night, he finally meets his mom after years on the run. Meanwhile, that night Chan decides to catch some king crabs himself. He comes back bringing some while Jin has already been waiting anxiously on the pier. Somehow, Sang's mother is around there too and she invites them to come to her house. On their way, they see Sang is caught by the police. He asks for help, but his mother can't help him. This incident triggers Chan to remember his childhood trauma when his mother leaves him for no reason. Jin notices the change in Chan's behavior after that incident. He must have been reminded of his biological mother. Therefore, she decided to ask his father about it. It turns out that Chan's mother was deaf and Chan almost got killed because of it. That incident made her mother think, with her condition like that, she couldn't be a good mother for him. That's why she entrusted Chan to Jiang's mother. However, Chan still thinks that his mother abandoned him. A few moments later, Jiang's mother was found fainted and immediately brought to the hospital. On the other hand, round two of the kimchi contest is about to start. The top 10 contestants are ready with their own special kimchi recipe. Jiang is using dried golden pollock fish for her main star while Chan is using the king crabs he caught before. During cooking, Chan's bad childhood memory is haunting him, making him lose his focus and injure his hand. He immediately gathers his focus back and continues his dish. Finally, the judging time comes. The judges compliment Jiang's dried golden pollock fish kimchi although they underestimated it at first. Different from Jiang, Chan gets negative comments from them. It's because his kimchi's taste doesn't match their expectations. As a result, Jiang's rank boosts into first place. However, Chan still stays in the top two, making him and Jiang advance to the grand final. The topic will be the best kimchi can be made. Meanwhile, knowing that Chan still misunderstands his mother, Chan's father decides to take him somewhere. Turns out that he takes him to the doctor who treated his mother before she died. The doctor tells them that taking care of her was the most emotional moment of his career as he could see her passion to stay alive until her son visited her. She died right after the little Chan came. 
That story instantly changes the way Chen sees his mother. Now he knows that his mother loved him so much. And finally, the grand final begins. There are only Jiang and Chan left, standing as the two best kimchi chefs in South Korea. Chan believes that he can beat her sister now. For this round, he named his dish Mom's Kimchi, while Jiang named her dish Heartwarming Kimchi. When the judging starts, everyone is very surprised realizing that they made the same kimchi. Chan and Jiang also didn't expect that. But, it turns out that Chan's kimchi has an advantage. He used cinnamon powder on his kimchi, while kimchi usually doesn't contain it. In front of everyone, he reminds Jiang that her mother used to put some cinnamon powder on her kimchi. She did that to make Jiang feel warm as she used to catch a cold when she was little. Jiang is very emotional to hear that story and starts crying. Chan's kimchi reminds her of her mother's endless love. Now she regrets being rude to her mother. In the end, Jiang's mother finally passes away. However, she can rest peacefully because Jiang and Chan are finally getting along again. They agreed to work together and reopen Chunyangak which has historical value to them. Their mother must be happy to see it all from heaven. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.